Hi everyone, and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'm going to be jeweling a cockpit, though this technique can be used on anything that's meant to have a reflective surface, like visors and gemstones. The first thing we want to do is paint the entire surface black, so for this I'm using Army Painter's Dead Black. Next, you need to decide what color you want the reflection or gemstone to be, then choose a dark shade of that color and a light one. Blue contrasts well with yellows and browns, so I'll be using that. For my dark blue, I've chosen Cantor Blue. I highly recommend a wet palette for this part since we're going to be doing a lot of paint mixing and we want our paint to stay very thin. For my light blue, I've chosen Calgar Blue, and I'm also going to put some white onto my palette. I've added enough water to my dark blue to make it almost into a wash. The goal here is to slowly change the color from black on one end to bright blue or white on the other end. First, I'm going to add a layer of the dark blue to nearly the entire cockpit. I'll let that dry and then add a slightly smaller layer. After three or so layers, I'll brighten the blue a bit. I'm mixing the light blue into the dark, just until there's a noticeable difference in the shade. Then I'll add a little more water to thin it down. One tip while painting this kind of effect is to move your brush from the dark end to the light end. When you lift your brush, a small pool of paint is left behind and it's better to leave this at the bright end. So after I've applied two to three layers of this shade, I'm once again going to brighten the blue. At this point my shade is about 50-50 Cantor Blue and Calgar Blue. Now I'm just repeating the previous steps of adding more layers of lighter paint, and each time I do, I'm shrinking the area that I cover. For the next layer, I'm ready to use pure Calgar Blue, so now I'm going to water that down to the same consistency that I had my Cantor Blue. So as you can see, I'm now down to a very small area. I'm only painting a fairly thin line along the center window and the top corners of the side windows. The final two layers, I mixed a roughly equal amount of white into my light blue, and then I put a final, very small area of pure white at the top of each window. The last thing I'm going to do is add a reflective glint coming from the darkest part of the cockpit. This represents the entry point of light coming into the window or gem. For this, I'm just going to add a dot of pure white. As you can see, the entry point for my light source is in front of the mech, but if you wanted it to appear as though the sun was directly above, you could just reverse the direction of the light in dark colors. In other words, the darkest end points towards the light source. So that concludes the jeweling effect on the cockpit. I'm now going to put some finishing touches on the mech, so stick around if you want to see those. I'm going to create a textured base for this miniature, starting with some sterling mud. There are a lot of gaps under the feet of the mech, so I'm first going to fill in these. Next, I'm going to add a bit of extra mud in some random places and stick a rock or two into the mud. For the final bit of texture, I'm going to smear a layer of a ghrelin earth around the rest of the base. Once I have some good coverage, I'll let the textures dry for an hour or two. Now that those are dry, we want to let the colors match properly, so I'm going to cover the entire base with a thin layer of Steel Legion Drab. I'll come back to the base, but first I'm just going to add a few scuff marks on the feet of the mech using Plate Mail Metal. Anything walking around rocky terrain all day is bound to lose some paint. Next for the base, I'm going to cover the entire surface with some Agrax Earthshade, and then follow it up with a dry brush of the original Steel Legion Drab. Following that, I'll do a second dry brush of Xandri Dust. 
I'm not worried about my dry brush hitting the feet of the mech, since the feet are bound to pick up some dust anyhow. Next, just to add some color, I'm going to paint two of the missiles a dark red. For this I'm going to mix about two parts Mephiston red and one part Angel Green, which is the same as Castellan Green. Once that dries, I'm going to paint the top half of those missiles with some pure Mephiston red. Finally, I'm going to paint around the rim of the base using Dryad Bark. Once everything's completely dry, I'll coat the entire miniature with a layer of matte varnish. The final step is to give a gloss coat to the cockpit. For this I'm using Ard Coat mixed with a small amount of water. And that concludes the paint job on the Mad Cat. I hope you enjoyed these videos and thank you very much for watching.